Baptist Church tonight. It's good to be here in the Lord's house. Let's all stand and get your hymn books there. Turn to page number 451. Where could I go? We'll sing all three verses. with you. But Father, we have many needs on our hearts tonight. We want to lift them up to you at this time. We pray you'll be with uh, Kevin Hicks who has cancer. Also be with Francis Bowman who is in Silver. Uh, Christy McBride has several unspoken requests. Be with the family of uh, Christine Davis. Be with Wayne Hodges in his hip and Toby Moore who has a cold. We pray you take care of all of these needs tonight, Father. And Father, we have many other special needs we're going to lift up to you tonight also, Father. We pray you be with our pastor tonight that brings a message to us. That it'll be a message we need to hear, Father, to help us to walk closer with you. We pray you watch over him and his family and keep them safe, Father, as he prepares the messages here for your flock. We thank you for our church attendance and tithing and giving and the way things have been going great here at Timberlake Baptist Church. We pray they'll continue to do so, Father. 
We pray for our deacons and our trustees as they make decisions according to the work that needs to be done around the church here, Father. We just pray you lead, guide, and direct them in the way they should go. Thank you for the sale of this property that's coming up, Father. We just pray for our, our new building along with Barrett Construction and the plans and Mike Maracas, the architect. We pray all of these will work together, Father. We'll soon be out on our land work, worshiping you in our new building, Father. We just thank you for what you're going to do for us there. Thank you for eternal broadcast and that ministry, Father, as we spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Also, thank you for our WTBI broadcast in Greenville, South Carolina. And, Father, we're seeing good results down that way, Father, as we uh, broadcast your message each night. Thank you, Father, for Believers Bible Institute, the Sunday School and Teachers, our youth ministry and children's churches, and our Tuesday Bible study, our ministry here at Timberlake Baptist Church. We pray, Father, they'll continue to grow as they uh, we study your word here, Father. Thank you for the peace of Israel, Father. Pray you be with our president, nation, and economy. Take care of the needs there. We pray our leaders will turn to you, Father, as they make decisions that affect our whole country, Father. And Father, we pray you lead them in the way they should go. Be with the conflicts in the Ukraine, the Iraq, Iran, North Korea, Afghanistan, and Syria. We pray, Father, you keep our soldiers safe while they're there. Bring them back to us, Father. Be with their loved ones who are at home, Father, waiting for them to come back home. We just pray you touch them and give them peace tonight, Father. Thank you, uh, thank you for our visitors, Father, our new converts. We just pray, Father, that our visitors will continue to come and worship with us here. And we pray, Father, that we see new converts. We'll be able to teach them the, the, uh, about the Bible, Father, and the way of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what he can do for them, Father. Now, Father, we have many needs for salvation tonight, Father. We will lift them up to you. We pray someone will go and break the bread of life with them before it's eternally too late. Pray you be with Nick Albino, Carl Amos, Wade Ayers and his health, Brandon and Pants, Rachel Bowen, Jackie Bryant, Ashley Cobb, Tommy and Jamie Connor, Ann Crutchfield, Bobby Dalton, who has cancer, Clint Davis, Terry Deer, who has cancer, Robert Durr, Lester Dotson, Michelle Doss, Joel Dutton, Tom Hardy, Jesse Horbett, Brandon Gotze, the Horsley family, Jimmy Jones, Billy, Mike, and Stephen King, Ryan and Tyler Kinder, Buster Lewis, Sean McCall, Chase and Haley Minter, Darren Moore, Michelle Owen, Bradley Payne, Margaret Poston, Mark and Brian Reagan, Kevin and Victor Sanchez, Mark and Timothy Sherrill, Dylan Smith, Sean and Bobby Stout, uh, Cindy, Kimberly, Madeline, Megan, Melvin and Thompson, and Dustin Turner, uh, Buddy Travis, Joyce Watson, Jessica Wood, Wade Woods, Claude Wall, uh, Tommy Vincent, and Les Young. Again, Father, we pray someone to go and tell them about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he can do for them and how he can change their lives before it's eternally too late. And we pray, Father, for these families and uh, people to get back in church tonight, Father. We pray for the Cleary family, Buddy and Carol Galden, Cassie and family, DJ and Chelsea, Gary Graham, Kirsten McBride, Jonathan Reed, Glenn Tickle, Daryl Tickle, and family. And Father, we have many health needs we're going to make known to you tonight, Father. We just pray you take care of those needs. Be with Skyler Bowen, or Riker Bowen. I'll be with myself and my kidneys and ears. Be with Deborah Connor and her shoulder, Earl Connor, uh, Jack Dale, Tony Dalton, Logan Drone, Linda Durham, Joyce Earp, Roy and Cletus Evans, Faith Ann Hawley, Audrey Hoskins, Maureen Johnson, David and Gail Jones, Beverly King, Angeline Merriman, uh, Shelby Martin and her knee, Gary and Kathy McCollum, Betty Mitchell, who has blood clots, Toby Moore, Linda Moorefield, Diane Mills, uh, Nancy Newton, Bobby Nichols, who has asthma, Loretta Nichols, who's recovering from surgery, David and Patty Murray, Angie and Billy Oaks, Vincent Sarah Piotta, Alan Cheryl Podobinski, Ann Pruitt, Vicki and Robert Reed, uh, Cindy Rutherford, Gary Samuels and his foot, Nat and Barbara Saunders, Robin Shields, Mike Smith, Bill and Judy Snow, Carol Tickle, who's recovering from surgery, Ricky Toller, Angel Underwood, Anita Warwick, Evelyn Watlington, Leon and Connie Wiles, be with Lois Witt, uh, Mary Sue Wilson, Hal Yancey, and Amy Young. We pray, Father, you'll uh, touch these individuals, restore their health, Father, and bring them back into the fold, for we ask these things in your name. So we continue with our prayer list, Lord. We ask that you be with those with diabetes. Lord, we ask that you be with Amanda, Ron Island, Sherry Bly, Logan Camino, Debbie Eagle, Vicki Miller, David Murray, Kendall Sage Oaks, Rod Rains, Lee Rains, Danny Warwick, and Wendy Hensey. Lord, we ask that you be with those with COPD. Lord, be with Mike Mills, Jim Phillips, Sheila Richardson, and Amanda Watson. 
Uh, we'll be actually speaking to those in the nursing homes. We have Dale Leffer, Susan, Ga uh, Susan Carter, Catherine Collins, Susan Dooley, Patsy Ferguson, Curtis Martin, Betty Ray, Francis Roberson, Joyce Thomas, Diana Wagner, John Corn, Fido Crane, Michelle Johnson, and Kyle Bal Baldwin. I uh, would ask you to be with those autonomous and dementia, be with Mary Malone. Um, we pray for our friends, family, and our neighbors. Lord, be with Austin Begley, Benny Begley, Kara Bonnet, Phyllis Cleary, Anna Cleary, Raymond Cleary, Jean Connor, Mike Francisco with his back, Lord, Amanda Ferguson, Jerry Flag Flanagan, um, Barbara Hines, Toby Hines, Mary Heiss, Sarah, Sarah Kirby, Damian Lewis, Nick Madigan, Chelsea Martin, Danny Martin, Keith Moorfield, Donald Owen, Dale Ray, Florence Richardson, Charlie Robertson, Vicki Schelling, Shirley Shive, Glenn and Nancy Slayton, Alan Shirley Taylor, The Vickers Family, Garland Watson, Preston Watson, and Jim Wyatt. Lord, we ask that you be with those of you who have cancer, Lord, we ask that you touch their bodies in a mighty way. Be with uh, Jenna Atkins, Portia Atkins, Kathy, and Kathy Allen, Bobby Alley, David Bale, Tom Barley, Robin Baker, Scooter Barton, Vanessa Burchett, Pam Carter, Ronnie Carter, Carolyn, Tammy Cox, Barbara Clarkson, Bill Cooper, Ann Dales, Pat Dalton, Brenda Davis, Melanie Dickerson, Thomas Dix, Kelly, Kellen Dunn, Jeremy Ferguson, Mary Ferris, Tammy Fries, Amanda Garter, April Garden, James Griffin, Sherry Grundy, Michelle Hall, Red Hardy, Karen Hilton, Anika Hodnett, James Holt, Kevin Hopkins, Carrollton Hoskins, Pamela Hudson, James Humley, Emerson Kitts, Linda Mahangos, Joseph Miller, Billy Joe Moran, Karen Nations, Tony Phillips, Mary Nestor, Ruth Patterson, Tasha Ritchie, Donald Ricketts, David Roberson, Patricia Robinson, Linda Wyatt, Robin Stallings, Jess Waller, Frank Wilkerson, and Dave Wilkinson. And we ask that you be with the remainder of this prayer list. All these things we pray in your precious name. Our Father in heaven, as we continue to pray for the prayer list, Lord, pray for all the special requests, Lord, to just meet their needs and answer their prayers. I pray for Donna Amos, Chris Atkins, Penny Bailey, Jenny Baird, Skylar Bowen, Matthew Bryan, Tanya Curry, Dale Cleary, Donald Francis, Manny Graham, Mallory Hamlet, Sean Teresa Horbett, Janice Hodges, Katie Van Hunt, Pastor and Sister Hussey, Esther Lewis, Esther Lewis, Shelby Martin, Mike Diane Mills, Angie Moore, Sean Patterson, Sarah Piotta, Daisy, Nick Fitzpatrick, Betty Price, Bonnie Reigns, Skylar Whitney, Amy Saunders, Susan Sidmans, Kevin and Kim Snow, Bob Tam Tamson, Michael Tickle, or Mike Tickle, Eileen Tickle, Hannah Vigman, Landa Walker, Matthew Chi Williams, Vicki Reed, Daniel Roach, Ryan and Betty Yates. Lord, pray for all the ones who are in college. Just continue to speak with them, Lord. Help them be a light to those that they can come in contact with, Lord. And just continue to just keep them on the straight and narrow path, Lord. I pray for Tyler Arlen, Becca Clarity, Alyssa, Bradley Gotti, Carlton Hoskins, Trinity Langley, Lizus Lewis, Joanne Jennings, Dakota McBride, Kayla Moore, Amber Nacilia, Caleb Pooley, Mary Sue Woodson, Tori Underwood, Christine Yancey, Jason Yancey. Lord, pray for the McGee family. Just be with them. Give them peace and comfort, Lord. Just continue to just watch over them. Just give them the strength in the time of need. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, be with us. Help us continue to focus on soul winning as far as 2023. Lord, I pray for the down east boys, Lord, that uh, souls will be saved, lives will be changed, be a packed out house with Laura Clarkson and Dr. Cloud and Larry Johnson, Lord, that it will just continue to be souls being saved, lives being changed, and the brethren encouraged, Lord. I pray for Tamar Aldridge as far as missionaries, Lord, and Virginia Assembly Independent Baptist, Randy Ashcraft, Becca. Beacon Baptist Missions, Commander Al, Emmanuel Bala, Francis Earl Clarkson, John Mavis Coleman, Mike Sue Cook, Stan Cullen, Keith Colors, Joseph Dell, Chris Giacomo, Fortina Trates, Faye Dykes, David Gibbs, Virgil Gaiman, Jimmy Harris, Larry Henderson, Adrian Hernandez, Lois Howe, Patrick Hubbard, Buster Kinsey, Frank Kinsey, George Kinsey, Nestor LeBrugan, 
Bobby Lee, Jimmy Long, Sergio Mahano, Stoneman Rescue Missions, Nathan Miller, National Passes Cuba, National Pass in Pakistan, Dr. John and Linda Mitchell, Alan Nye, Mike Peckoff, Michael Peckoff, David Rawson, Ken Reem, Evangelist Jeff Worley, Dan Ritchie, Demetrio Rodrigo, World Health Ministries, Jason Sobo, Tabernacle Children's Home, Hal Williams, and David Rice. Lord, and I ask all these things in Jesus' name. We'd like to remember tonight the pastors and evangelists that uh, Timberlake Baptist Church is able to uh, help them and, and supply their needs and help them in all kind of ways, Lord. We thank you that we're able to do that. So we'd like to call out and remember all the names tonight. It's Scott A.G., Jamie Adams, Joe Arthur, Bobby Brooks, Melvin Campbell, Kenneth Cloud, Jeff Chapman, Scott Dean, Carlton Duck, Larry Fitzgerald, Joy Flanagan, Joy Foley, also Donnie Glass and Frank Gooch, Mike Hart, Jason Holly, Wayne Hudson, Larry and Donna Johnson, John Kenzie, Derek and Tim Kaiser, also Terry St. John, Steve Lamb, Joel Logan, also Carol Martin, Dave Peters, Dan and Tim Schelling, Davy Shelton, <coughs> Mark Snowden, Donnie Stevens, Philip Stout, the Tobit family, Brian Warren, and also Jeff Woods. May we bow in prayer tonight. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity you blessed us with. We pray for each one that made a way tonight. We say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Father, we pray for the evangelists and pastors that we're able to support. We pray, God, that you'd supply all the needs. You'd keep them safe. You'd keep a hedge about them. And Lord, they might, you might give them many souls for their labor. We know there's many that's lost and undone without Christ in this whole world. So Lord, we just pray that they'll continue to fight and do the good fight, Lord. And, and Lord, we just hope and pray that many will come before it's everlasting too late. Father, we love you. We thank you most of all for loving us. We thank you for what you did at the cross of Calvary. Again, we thank you and love you for all you do for us, keeping us safe. And pray also that you keep a hedge about our pastor and his wife and all the members of our church. And again, we thank you for all that you do for us. <coughs> Excuse me. For it's in Christ's holy and precious name that I do pray. Amen. Good evening. This is uh, the Colors Missionary in Taiwan. Uh, dear Pastor Friends, we have now entered our new year, which we are in 2023. We wish you all to fill with God's blessings and fruit free from our labors. We are still working in two churches. Two young Taiwanese men are helping in the Mountaintop Baptist Church. We are hoping one of them will become the pastor soon. At the new church, Baptist Church, we are seeing visitors come and see some becoming regular attendees. We feel a couple of them are coming close to salvation. Please pray for them and for this church as we become more established in this area. The two churches had a good attendance for the, the, the Christmas meeting and uh, first-time visitors, which is good, you know, like I said, for that to be happening as far as that now into this year. We humble by love and care for us in Christ's service, Keith and Janet Colors. That's all I got. All right, take your books. Let's turn to 324. Y'all stand. I know it gets hard as you get along. Smile. And a hard time smiling. Go over an ET. Go ahead. Smile, ET.
sermon tonight, Frank, so you got it all last week. You wrote your last week. Now I'm going to turn it all in to the whole thing. And you could turn it this week, since I put it in last week, and call me when you got I think I'm going to break it off. That's great. Our Lord, we love you today. We thank you for loving us and your goodness to us. Take us off and we'll bless you through the Lord. Lord, we may use you to encourage the Lord and the lost. Father, help us to be faithful to you. Thank you, Lord, for our privilege to be here tonight. And help us to be better than we came. In Jesus' name, amen.
speaking. People have so many misconceptions about what prayer is. Prayer, if you want to write this down, the Lord Isaac will help you. Prayer is two words, but three words. Talking to God. That's it. It's nothing complicated about it. Man makes prayer complicated. Did you know what people think that the people, when you pray, people, if you want to know what people are hearing you say, that's a misconception? They should be listening to you and be praying yourself. You don't have to worry about people listening to what you say because they'll be praying themselves. It's a misconception. Yeah, everybody's just all nervous because they don't want to pray in public. They don't want to pray out loud. Or they don't want to say the blessing at the table at the restaurant because somebody might see them. Well, I hope somebody does see you. But the most of all, I hope God hears you. But we've got to get rid of these misconceptions about prayer and understand how important prayer is. If we don't understand how important prayer is, the house will be packed tonight. We who are here, we've got to step up to the plate, and we've got to start praying for them to start praying. Because that's where the power is, and we'll talk more about that at on point eight, which may be six months from now. But anyway, when we get to point eight, we'll talk about that. But the Bible is clear. Don't use vain repetitions of the heathen, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. God's not really counting how many words you say. You know, you're in high school teaching, you had to have an essay with 150 words, and you come in with exactly 150 words. Not one more, not one less. Uh, that's not what God's looking for. God's not looking for the number of the words you say. He's looking for the sincerity of heart in which you say them. Say amen. You've got to have a burden. Let me tell you something. If you're burdened, you'll pray. If you're concerned and you're sincere, you will pray. Our prayer list is not an exercise in futility. Our prayer list is an exercise in discipline. But we gather here. Every Wednesday night, we take that prayer list and we take whatever other prayer, other prayer list come in, or our names come in, and we pray in order, disciplinedly, praying for these people. Faithfully praying for these people. It's not just a list of names that we're trying to rattle off to get something done to take a little time in the process. We are talking to God on behalf of these people. We're praying for someone may be lost and need help from God. If they pray, God's not going to hear them. But you know what? If we pray, God will hear us. And maybe help that lost person get well, and in the process, they may see that what God can do and find Christ as their Lord and Savior. There's a real element to this prayer thing. It's not an exercise in futility. It is a discipline that brings forth miracles. And that's how we have to look at this thing. An omniscient God who knows who is in sincere prayer and who's not in sincere prayer. When we're having prayer time, you don't have your list stop praying over those names. Read in the line with the person. And we'll talk more about that and pray them later again. But the, the, the important thing is the more people pray, the more power there is. There is power in numbers. And God knows individually whether each of us is sincere or if we're just giving away for the promise. We've got to stop this looking at the promise stuff and we've got to be sincere about what we're praying and who we're praying for. The hypocrites were not were doing something good but they were doing it wrong. And I'm afraid sometimes you and I may do something good and then we pray, but if we're doing it wrong, it's not going to be effective. Or if we pray and we've got one of these eight hindrances in our lives, we're wasting God's time and our breath. You don't know what these eight hindrances are. And look, I love you, whatever you say. I love y'all, but y'all in here. Y'all in these eight. I'm in these eight. You're in these eight. You need to open yourself in these eight and find out which one is hindering you and remove it. Amen, my Lord. And remove it. And get it out of your life. And then stop your prayer from being hindered. The Lord Jesus is trying to point out the importance of natural sincerity in prayer. Very little importance is put on prayer. I'm going to tell you something. I, 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 I visit some churches from time to time. I get to preach from place from time to time. I went to a church, and I noticed that they spent 
the first part of their service, praying for the needs of their people by name. And I come back in and say, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a prayer list every Saturday night. I'm going to list everybody we need to pray for. And we're going to pray for them before the service starts. And who have done that? And there we see some prayers answered by just praying corporately here at church over this. Because that's a part of worship. Amen. That's a part of worship. And if, if you sleep while somebody's praying, shame on you. You ought to be praying. Don't let your mind wander. Keep yourself sincere. Keep yourself focused. And, and, and take these prayers home. And look, it only takes 20 minutes to pray with that prayer list. Who doesn't have 20 minutes? If you're going to tell me you don't have 20 minutes to, to pray over a prayer list during the day's time, number one, either you're lying or you don't have your priorities in order. Everybody can take 20 minutes. And, and all of us are guilty of not being faithful to pray. We need to be more faithful and more sincere. It is not what the public sees or hears that makes a difference. It's what God knows to be true about the sincerity of your heart. That's why it doesn't matter what you say when you pray. If you're worried about impressing people when you pray, you're worried about the wrong thing. Don't worry about that. Who cares what they think? You're not talking to them. You're talking to God. You're talking to the Lord. He's the one you got to impress and look. There ain't no new words in his vocabulary. God already knows them all. God doesn't want you to impress him with your verbiage. He wants you to impress him with your sincerity and your burdens and your cares. When a person fashions their prayer for the eyes and ears of others, they never make it to the eyes and the ears of God. If you're praying for people to hear you, it's not going to pass this scene right here. But if you fashion your prayer for God, it won't make any difference if people hear it or not. It makes a difference if God hears your prayers. And He wants to hear and answer your prayer more than you want to pray it. You better believe me. And if you really want your prayers answered in these next eight points we're going to make over the next few weeks, if you're on these and you're applying to your life, your prayer life will go from here to here. I promise you, you'll see a difference. You'll see a difference. All the power and strength of prayer vanishes in the life of someone who doesn't know who they're praying to. And all the beautiful words and all the flower language, all the poetry and the prose, the rep repetitive phrasing is absolutely wasted if the words never reach the ears of Almighty God. We've got to be concerned with the words making it to the throne room of God. That's what we've got to be concerned about. That's why we're talking about these eight hindrances. So nothing will stop our prayer. Aren't your prayers that important? Mine are. I, I think my prayers are that important, but I don't want anything to hinder my prayers. I want to be a prayer warrior. I want to see my prayers answered. I want to see a difference. And we pray the most, listen to this now, this is the theology, but it's true. You pray the most powerful when we say the least. Think about it. It's not how many words you say. It's how you say them. It's that you say them and you care about who you say them to. Psalm 17, 1. Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of two words. You have circle this in your Bible. Fanned lips. When we're praying, we're not talking to a man, we're talking to God of the universe. We're talking to one who created the world, controls the world, and can change the world in the snap of his finger, if he so desires. The word Lord here means one who is in full control. Do you believe God's in full control tonight? I do. And I want him to know I believe he's in full control. Well, preacher, how do you not let God know that you believe is in full control by not giving up on prayer, by being faithful in prayer. And the reason David said, he said, attend unto my cry, attend unto his prayer, he realized he was not worthy to be heard by God. Now, don't go to God brazen. Don't go to God like you, you, he owes you something, you got a gun and you think you rob him. You can't rob God. You forget that. Don't go to God brazen. You go to God humbly, realizing that you don't even deserve to be listened to. 
You don't even deserve to be heard. When you go to him that way, you'll have his attention. You'll have his ear. Because he knows you need him. He knows you want him. And you need God. Did you know God needs to be needed? He needs to be loved and wanted. That's why he created man to start with. Now, David prayed because he believed God loved him despite his humanness. Now, this is another side of the equation. You know, sometimes we feel like we don't deserve to pray. I know I don't. And if you don't ever feel that way, maybe you need to have a checkup. I do stupid things. I break God's heart. I break God's law. I break God's rules. And I hurt God. And I mess up. And sometimes that makes me think that I, I, I pray. I, I don't deserve to pray. And in our mind, that's probably true. But do you know that's not the way God thinks? Do you understand that? That's not the way God thinks. He wants to forgive you so he can listen to you. He wants to hear you pray more than you want to pray. So he doesn't want these hindrances between you and him. He wants you to deal with them. But the devil doesn't want you to deal with them, so he makes you feel like you're less than, than able. Oh, let me tell you something. All you have to do is confess your sins, and he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, and he will listen to you. He wants to hear from you and talk to you. I went by, Lord of mercy, my days is run together. It was last Thursday, what did we do? We went to see Audrey. And uh, we went in Audrey's house, a poor Audrey laying there in the bed, and uh, I walked in the room. I said, Lord, she's not even going to know who I am. She says, I know who you are. You're the preacher. I said, that's right, Audrey. That's who I am. I'm the preacher. And they put her to bed to, to, to get her a nap and to get her, get her some rest. Because she, she, I mean, she's, she's still Audrey. Do I tell you what I'm talking about? She's not tall. And she's, she's not, not able. She, she gets to go and she, you know, the words get jumbled and they get on the bed and get all... And she, she, she gets frustrated. frustrated. She, she can't get out what she wants to say. say. So, so we stayed, stayed about, about half an hour, and I knew she, she was getting tired. tired. I didn't want to frustrate her and make her worse. I said, well, we're going to get out of here tonight. And tomorrow they'll bring you some food. We're out in the country lunch, and we're going to bring you some food. She, she says, black eyed peas and cornbread. No, 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 and uh, so I said, we're going to pray in places I don't want y'all to go. I want y'all to stay. I want y'all to talk. And bless her, just bless me. But she wanted me. And she wanted me to stay there and talk. I knew you need to stay there and talk. If you start talking to the sitter, she wouldn't sleep. So I knew she was tired. But she wanted me to stay there and talk. So I knew she was tired. But she wanted us to be there. Let me tell you something. God loves you more than that. 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 He, he wants, wants you to come, come to him. him. He, he wants, wants you to pray. pray. He, he wants, wants you to share your heart with him. Now, now the word, word faint. David, David was saying to God, God here by saying, saying uh, that, that go not out with feigned lips. What David was trying, trying to say to God, God is, I'm not praying as, as an inspirer or a schemer. There's, There's a lot of people that come to church, church to, to explore the scheme. But they don't come to church, church for the right reasons. And when they don't come for the right reasons, the reasons they're tearing God's work up on heart to hate. You better believe, believe it. it. They're hurting people instead, instead of helping people. And, and folks, folks we've got to come, come to church, church not as explorers or schemers. We, we come saying, I need you, Lord. I need, I need your wisdom. And, and I, I need your help. Are you all right? right? That's, that's where I'm at. I, I need his help, and I need his wisdom. wisdom. And, that's and that's what David was saying. I need your help. I'm not here, here to manipulate you, God. God. I'm, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm, I'm here to say, Lord, what do I do? If you show me, I'll do it. Easy preaching, hard living. Because usually what God shows us is not what we want to do. But what we have to do. Because he knows what's best. Say amen. The word fame, I think, I think he was about to say, the Hebrew word, word, word miramal, what a word. name, miramal, what a word. In the, the sense, sense of deceiving, fraud, crafted for manipulation. Now look, 
we may not be innocent, we're all guilty of trying to manipulate God. It's just better than us. We've got to get it out of us. Prayer is not a manipulation. Prayer is not bargaining with God when they're not in Washington, D.C. or Richmond. We're not bargaining with God. We're not trying to cut a deal with God. Uh, if any deal is going to be cut, it's going to be His deal. It's going to be His way. Because it's just God. And we're the humans. And we've got to... He's got to manipulate us. He's got to make us see His way. If it's going to work. Deceitfully, deceitfully, false, feigned, guile, subtly, treacherously, in treason. Treacherously, in treason. Now, now folks, we've got to be careful. We'll never go to God with feigned lips. We will say what we say to use God. We're not here to use God. We're here to God to use us. And in order for God to use us, we have got, got to bow down and, and submit and surrender to Him. And we've got to come to Him as needy people, as needy as we can possibly be. David did the prayers of a hypocrite with the fire of the dead ears. Job chapter 35, verse 13. Let me help you with the book of Job. You can't just read the book of Job. And, and just read it as it is because, because there's four conversations going on. How many of y'all knew that? Okay, okay good. good. Four, four conversations. There's Job talking, Bilhab, Eliphaz, and Zophar. And Zophar, he didn't say nothing. Okay? okay. But there's four people in this conversation going on. Now, now you, you have, have to know, know who's talking and, and who's talking about, about who. Because if it's Job talking, he's usually talking about God. If it's Bill and Sarah or Will and Alice, then he's usually talking about Job and pushing him down. You got me? So, so Job chapter 35, verse 13. Surely God will not hear vanity. Now I don't know which one that was. I should have looked it up today, but it was one of them three. And then I said, who's going to listen to Job? God will not listen to Job. He's vain. Neither the Almighty regard it. Now, what does this mean to say is true? Okay? God's not going to hear a man. But he wants true about who he said it out. You understand what your preacher's saying? Job was not guilty of being vain. Job, the preacher was saying, he's vain, he's going to do something, he's got a little business, God ain't going to listen. Well, so what he did. What is the first place you go? If you've done something you've got no business, you want to make it right. To God. <laughs> to God. Go straight to Him. So don't be doing that so far in the past. Please don't be in your own story, okay? Be a true servant. The world may question you in your motives. They will question Job's motives. But we can rest and have confidence that God knows our motives, our purity, and our humility. So don't ever let the people that stop you from coming, coming to this altar or praying. Don't ever let that happen. Because people are God, they're just people. And they may mean well, but sometimes they're loose and more than they're loose. I mean, John, I said that to you. Don't let people stop you or hinder you from praying. Let me be judged one to seven nine. Will God hear this cry? Will in trouble come up upon him? What a stupid question. I don't know which one said it was one of them three. That's a stupid question. Yes, sir, we will hear you when you're in trouble. Will he hear you if you cause the trouble? Yeah, if you're coming in sincere and you're repentant and you're going to make things right. Absolutely. So here's three men who throw a hole in the mouth saying, well, who's going to hear this place? He's in trouble. trouble. He, he knows his own. Look, look. You know, sometimes we cause our own trouble. Sometimes the devil causes our trouble. Sometimes other people cause our trouble. Sometimes it's nature causes our trouble. Am I right? So we've got to understand something here. Listen, the place you want to go when you're in trouble is God. Don't let people make you feel like you shouldn't go to God. There is no circumstance I can think of other than blasphemy. Other than blasphemy, I don't, I don't think there's any situation, situation you should be able to go to God with. Amen? You want to go to God with blasphemy, that's crazy. 
but if I don't care if you're in trouble, if you cause or somebody else causes it, it makes no difference. Go to God. That's, that's where, where you work things, things out. That's, that's where you make things right. right. Matthew 6, 6. But thou, when thou prayest, prayest enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, door pray to the Father which is in secret. secret. God, God says, says the best praying is done, done in private. Now, don't, don't reply, just think. think. How, How much time are we spending, spending praying in private? I, I think, think when you start, start the invitation, I need to be the first one on the altar. Don't, don't you? We need to spend more time, time praying privately. He says that's when the job's done. Shutting the world out and being alone with God because that's what God wants one on one alone time with you. I'm not knocking corporate prayer. That's why we're here tonight. But when we leave here and get done worshiping until our next worship time, we need to spend some time alone with God as well. One on one. When you can hear no one but the Lord, you'll hear him loud and clear. Don't play with the TV on. Don't play with the radio on. Cut the telephone on. Go ahead in your closet alone with God and let Him know you care enough that He'll let you know He hears you. He hears you. Boy, that's bad English. <laughs> He'll let you know He's heard you. Say amen. Amen. This is really an effective prayer. You know, the past few weeks have been so This is really an effective prayer. You know, this passage makes it clear that there's some things that do destroy. Our prayers. We're going to look at one night. Here's the first one. Ungratefulness. Ungratefulness. That is taking God for granted. Just expecting Him to be there. Expecting Him to take you and do for you no matter how you do for Him. Folks, that's bad business with God. Deuteronomy 143. Let's look at this. So I spake unto you, that's God, use me, as the nation of Israel, unto you, and ye will not hear. Sometimes I can get so out of the way while I'm preaching. It's, it's a good thing I'm a good preacher because it has a bad night of some people. I mean, some people act like they got ants in their hands. I'm not a preacher the Lord God, and it's. it's it's a good thing these doors are open because if it didn't, the revolving part of the door would be broke. I mean, how are they ever going to hear from God if they don't sit still and listen? Now, despite what y'all say, I ain't that long with it. You can go to some preachers and down and go to that church and you can find a real quick. I ain't as long with it as you think I am. You better set your clock on me. I'm going to be done when that thing slots 12 up there, maybe 5 after if I get a little excited. But not much after that, you're going to be out of here. Everybody ought to be able to sit down long enough to hear from God. Everybody ought to be able to sit down long enough to talk to God. Listen, since we were not here, but we rebelled against the command of the Lord. I'm convinced of this. You know what I believe mean? most people who rebel against the commands of the Lord and not paying attention to the church are on them. Now, when we get to heaven with Jesus and Christ, I may be guilty of a lot of things. But one thing I'm not going to be guilty of as a pastor is that I've done everything I can to get it to you. I haven't preached it to you. I haven't put it up there. I haven't put it on the internet. I haven't put it in print. <laughs> I do everything I can. To get the truth to you. So if you don't get it, you'll never point your finger at me and say, He didn't get it to me. Yes, I did. And then if you don't come to church and you won't get it on the internet, you won't get it. I made it to you. I ain't hard to figure out. I ain't hard to figure out. I'm doing my job to get the world to you so you can obey the Lord. But he says here that we're going against the commandments of the Lord and we're presumptuous up, up into the hill and the Amorites which dwelt in, in that mountain came out against you and chased you as bees do. Now let me stop right there. If you never run over a bee's nest, you really would yet. I was trying to be nice to my next door neighbor one day and I was mowing their grass. And I ran over and I messed the bees and I made them grow and I had it. I 
still unhappy I made them these. I got stung 37 times that we counted. Now, if I had been in public, and if I had been in the neighbor's yard, I'd have probably shrieked all the way home. I'll just tell you, but I didn't, because I was in public. But when I got in the house, it happened. And I got in the shower, and I had water all over me. And I mean, we counted 37, I'm pretty sure it was more than that, but I got my hind and stung, that's for sure. I look, when these chase you, you're in a whole heap of trouble because they need to turn around and get you. So we can. So I know this verse is talking about. And destroyed you, the sailor, even unto Homer. And you returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to your voice or give her unto you. Now, this tells you something about God. And you better take it home and make it. If you ignore him, he's going to ignore you. And it ain't his fault. You say, well, you've got to beg it to God. But you just won't listen to me when I come to him. No, you started it. You started it. You didn't listen. So now he can't listen. You forced his hand. You forced his hand not to listen. It was your choice. God is always trying to speak to us and lead us in the spirit of wisdom and the power of the Holy Ghost. You realize God's in you. He goes with you everywhere he goes with you right out of the day. It is a sin not to listen to the voice of God. And we know he's speaking. And to not be still and know what he's, uh, he's, uh, that he's God and, and, and to then apply the sin of ungratefulness is a big, bad thing. We need to be grateful he's with us all the time. We need to be grateful he wants to talk to us and speak to us. We should appreciate that gift of the seal of the Holy Spirit of God. It's a gift. It's a blessing. But if you take it for granted, it can cost you. It can cost you. Because have you ever had your mom and daddy buy you something nice? Nice outfit, nice pair of shoes. And you just didn't take care of it and tore it up. And then you went to mom and said, no. She said, well, you should have took better care of it. We all had that happen to us. God gave us the Holy Spirit. How in the world can we abuse him and turn against him and not listen? It's the greatest gift we got. It's the greatest thing we got. Let's tap in. I love it. My mother-in-law. Gave this to me for Christmas. It was one of these granddaddies. She had to stir it up. And then I, I love it. I love it. It's a whole lot better than them stick things because them stick things will stick you. Okay? You just pinch this little thing right here and slide it on there if you get your bottom on it and slide it on these holes are perfect. I appreciate that because every time I look at that, I think of her granddaddy. Me and her granddaddy got along good. I didn't get along with the rest of them too good, but I got along with them real good. He loved to joke and laugh, and I did too. We had a good time. And every uh, time I said it, I appreciate it. And if I hadn't appreciated it, I'd have thrown it in the drawer and not ever wore it. Now, those tie pins, I'll be honest, I like them too for one of those made all my days. If you ever not watch one of my round tie pins, you'll notice there's always a number on it. That was the year he worked at Burlington Industries. And here's the funny thing about that. Every year he worked at the Burlington Industries, that's how old I was. So if that pen said 14, he got that pen when I was 14 years old. If it said 19, I got it when he was 19 years old. And my mama gave me all his pens. And I got all of them. That's why I wear those. I wear them because I what? I appreciate them. I cherish them. I appreciate those tie pens and things. We need to appreciate the Holy Spirit. And the greatest way to appreciate the Holy Spirit is to talk to Him and let Him talk to you. A one-sided conversation doesn't last long. There's an art conversation. You talk a little bit, and the next one talks a little bit. Then you talk a little bit, and the next one talks a little bit. Have you ever talked to somebody that never let you talk? You don't understand that line, do you? That's not a conversation. That's a preaching. Or me. That's, that's my new move on. <laughs> Get out of the way of that one. Listen, he's always there. He's always aware. He 
always cares and is always there. Say amen. Why well, don't you want to talk to him? He's the greatest. Do not take advantage of his consistent loving presence and be ungrateful for it. Realize he's there. Appreciate he's there. Now, his presence is an invaluable gift that we must strive to take advantage of. It is sheer idiocy to ignore the voice of the Lord or to blatantly rebel against what he said. Now, look at my almost done. Presumptuously. Presumptuously is the Hebrew word zod. To boil with anger. That's saying this. Don't get so angry about what's going on around you. You forget who's with you. And you know what I mean? We've all done it. <laughs> We're all guilty of it. But you better be aware he's there. Say amen. To be rude or disrespectful. Hmm. How many times your mama popped you in the rear end because you were disrespectful to other people? Say so you know amen. Hey, when you don't, when you act like he's not there, that's disrespectful. And we all do it. We're humans. You have to work at making yourself aware he's always there. Don't be disrespectful. Now, if the president of the United States came here, I don't care who it was, we'd be respectful. Because he's the president, the governor. We'd be respectful of who that person was. And why aren't we respectful of who God is and he's with us all the time? Ooh, it's getting deep in here, a quiet one, he's all asleep, I'm not sure which one. To be proud. When you get so proud, you think you're so good that you don't need to respect God, you're in trouble. To presume or assume. To come to God presumptuously like he owes you. Let me tell you something. Nobody owes us nothing, especially God. God doesn't owe me and we owe him. So, so Israel is in the heaven of the Bible about humbling themselves before the Lord and seeking his wisdom and help, and help before they went to battle. battle. They just, just went to battle. battle. That's, that's that's, that's presumptuous. presumptuous. They just said, well, God's going to be with us no matter what. what. Well, that's, that's what, what they, they thought of Ahab. They were going to win back. Because they ate and sinned. sinned. And they, they were in the battle of sin and the camp that they were going to win back because one man stole the things that they could be used. It's crazy. You can not just presume that God's on your side because your mind and heart is just full of faulty. How many of y'all have good stuff in here? I, I, I put my foot up with a little bit of boxes. I know, I know I'm faulty. I make mistakes. mistakes. I fail things. things. Everybody, Everybody does. does. That's, That's life. life. Then we understand, understand we need God. God. Amen? Amen. And he's, he's not faulty. faulty or or we, can we can trust, trust him. him. We can we trust, trust him. him. Now, now, we must, we must realize we need his input and instruction all the time because he sees and knows and understands things we can't see and know. He's, he's got, got the bigger picture, bigger picture than we do. So let's, so let's trust, trust him. him. We, we need, need his omniscience to lead us, God us, direct us, not just every now and then, but every now and then. Here's the problem. We go to God only when we think we need him. How about that news for you? You need him every time you take a breath. Every, every time, time you breathe, you need him. It's not just a certain amount of things. Thing. You need him every day. And to, to presume that you, that you don't need him sometimes, sometimes, sometimes is ungrateful. We cannot, we cannot afford to be the audacious or rash with the souls and minds of those around us. If you are not aware of who God is for yourself, you are aware of your lost loved ones, your family, your friends, your neighbors, your church family. Amen? Amen? Just for them alone, you ought not to be rash or audacious. Amen? 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 Just just for them them alone, be rash or audacious. Be grateful to take time to recognize through prayer and patience the necessity of knowing God's wisdom and guidance. Amen? 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 Israel came back, back in two years, but it was, was too late. late. The wrong right decision, decision was made. made. The damage was, was done, and they, they done, done it because, because they were they they expected God to be there, there without, without showing respect. respect. Here's, Here's the problem: it's not that God didn't want to help Israel. It's not that God wasn't on their side. He was. He was on their side. 
But, but God, God cannot do what you don't allow him to do. God, God cannot cannot do you do do do. He, he will not move you He will not force himself on you, but he has got to do that willingness on your part to step aside and say, Lord, take the lead. Lord, show me where to go. If you go ahead without him, you go on. You've gone ahead without him. Without him. It's, it's a respect thing. thing. It's, a, it's, it's, it's calming down, down and thinking, thinking before you move. I need God, God in front of me, me, not behind me. me. I need God, God in front of me, not even beside me. Beside me. I want him in front of me. me. I want to be following him. him. Listen, the damage, the damage of ungratefulness toward God, God can, can be devastating. devastating. He, he can, can be devastating. Last verse, we're going home. Luke 17, 18. They are not found. They are not found that return to give glory to God. Out of all those lepers that were healed, there was only one that came back and told Jesus, "Thank you." Only one. Don't think about somebody else. Don't think about the person next to you beside you behind you. When was the last time we went back to God and gave Him the glory? So many, so many times we just go ahead and do. And God's, God's not with us. And when and failure comes, you can't, you can't give Him the glory because He didn't do it. You, you did it. He didn't mess up. You, you, did. you did. Or, or I, I did. did. So, so understanding, understanding that ungratefulness is, is a serious hindrance to prayer, to not be my arms just by your head and say, God, I'm sorry for all those times. I didn't, I didn't consult, consult you, you all those times, times I didn't reach out to you, all those times, times I just didn't be still in the way you move, move. and God, God helped me to recognize your necessity in my life, and, and helped help help me yield your relationship, and helped help me step back so, so you're not, not beside me, you're not, not behind me, but you're you always before me so I can see where to go and then what to do. But the first thing is to pray. It's not, not appreciating God's, God's presence. presence. And he's, he's always, always there. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. you. He's, he's always, always there. there. So, so now we've got to make him the promise. Lord, Lord, I'll never take, take you for granted. Lord, Lord help, help me. This is what I've had tonight. Lord, Lord, help, help me never, never take, take you for granted. Stand, stand to you. Father, I thank, I thank you for there for us. Lord, Lord help us be thankful. That you, you are there, and then have to step aside, aside. and let, let you take, take the lead, and surrender to me, and serve you, and be patient, and know that you're God, and be willing, Lord, really to follow, follow you. you, and when there's a little song that says, When you lose, I will follow. God, God helps us not just, just come and say, Lord, Lord I love you, you and I'm not going to follow you. And I'm going to start proving that by letting you be the lead. And always being great. And never, never taken take for granted, granted the presence of your Holy Spirit in our life. Amen.